Welcome to the fellowship. This will not be a typical episode where we sit around and crack jokes and talk mess. It's been quite a week for us here at Nation Golf. It's been quite a week for the world, frankly, and quite a week for the island of Maui. And Nation Golf has become a de facto headquarters for the relief operation. And we're going to talk about that because it was a huge, huge part of the last five days. Ryan Engel is here. He wasn't on the last episode that we tracked where I talked to his wife, Katie Kai, about what's going on. But we do encourage you to stick around and listen to this because we've got a lot of important things to say, some information to get out, and then just kind of a play-by-play of what this week really turned into. Ryan, I know that you are directly affected by what's happening. You have some serious ties to Hawaii and Maui in particular. You were just there a couple of weeks ago on a family vacation that we had so much fun recapping. And now the juxtaposition Mm. of what it is now that's happening over there has to really be sitting with you. How are you feeling right now in general? I'm I'm, I'm pooped. You know, it's all in a good way. It's all for a good thing, obviously. But we were touching on it this morning. It, it's just uh, tragedy always brings out the best, and in some people, unfortunately, the worst. But um, does bring out the best in so many of us. And to see the just the generosity one, that's like the obvious thing that's in your face. But from our perspective, being you know organizers of this little, I guess, movement you want to call it. I don't really have a name for it, but being the organizers of it, seeing the just man hours and hard work and just just grit that these volunteers did the past three or four days here has been jaw-dropping inspiring donations are awesome whether it's money or or physical donations supplies whatever but man the most valuable thing that we all have is time and when you see people just selflessly give their time, not only the minutes, but the effort. I mean, it's just, it was something that uh, I wasn't ready to uh, process. It just builds everyone up in the moment in real time. And uh, you just start digging deeper and digging deeper. And it, it was, it was some, something to see. If you haven't been paying attention to our social media, specifically our Instagram account, On Tuesday night, the island of Maui was ravaged by a wildfire that, according to the latest reports, has killed over 100 people. It's the deadliest wildfire in the United States. It completely decimated a town. That happened Tuesday night. The pictures and film and videos started coming in overnight and into Wednesday morning. Here's kind of how it unfolded for us and how we became a pseudo epicenter for the Southern California relief efforts. On Wednesday morning, we had a phone call with Katie Kai because Katie Kai was the first one posting about this. And we just asked her simply, what can we do to help? We are an apparel company. Is there anything we can do in terms of getting the message out to collect clothing? She said, yes, please go ahead and do that. We sent out a message Wednesday asking people to donate new and used clothing that we could gather up. Your wife went to work on creating an Instagram account, which we encourage everyone to follow, at Community Relief Maui. And within hours, the thing went from 10 followers to 100 to 200 to 300. By Thursday, the local news showed up. Spectrum News 1 came three different times, which was crazy. And then we started having people show up in droves to drop off stuff. And we realized what was happening was there was a movement starting and it was snowballing down the mountain, which is a really, really good thing. But at the time there were four of us working on it. You, me, Katie Kai doing the lion's share of the work and her partner, Jennifer Lawrence. And it was a four person effort that we quickly realized that wasn't going to be enough manpower or resources for it. So we called our friends, Justin Jung came on over and started running some logistics for us. And by Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we had no less than 60 different volunteers come through here and help take in donations, sort them, pack them, 
get them off to warehouses. It was an unbelievable scene to see how many people showed up, showed out, how many people went hard for the cause, and how many people, like you said, worked tirelessly and put in that sweat equity to make it happen. I mean, we have so many people to thank for it, but what are your takeaways? Now it's Monday, and you were here until 6 p.m. Sunday. We were both here Saturday. You've been here every day. I've been here every day except yesterday. Um, I know you're exhausted, but what are your takeaways from the incredible group effort we saw everybody put forward? Oh, man. Just inspired. It's easy to just see the world through your own eyes. We have our connections there. Obviously, Katie Kai's family, we've, we've been over this already. So when things like this happen, it's just, it's close to home. It's close to the heart. So it's easy to just compartmentalize it and, and see it through your own sphere. But you realize real quick when you see just the outpouring of, of, of blood, sweat, and tears that came to get this stuff done day in and day out. I mean, even breaking down the processing where we had the drop-offs, the going out, the, the boys doing the heavy lifty, the girls sorting. Dude, it was unbelievable. And, it, and it's just like throughout those days, hearing everyone's story of, of how they're connected and why they're feeling it too. And you're like, oh my God, you know, and Lahaina is a special place. It's historic. You're talking the capital of the Hawaiian kingdom through the 1800s. God, it's just, it's unbelievable. And it's gone. It's gone. And I think it's starting to hit everyone. And we're just the kind of people that when the going gets tough like that, it's like we tackle it. And it's been good to keep ourselves busy because it's horrific. You know, our friends over there right now who we're talking to in the evenings, once we're done with all this stuff during the day and these stories we're hearing of what happened and what's happening is just it's hard to imagine. Yeah, it's horrific, no doubt. And it's catastrophic, really. This death toll, and no one wants to comparison shop tragedy, but this death toll is nothing short of catastrophic. And we all know that with the amount of people missing and how long that they've been missing for, that it is only going to go up, which is just so sad to think about. I think the thing that shocked me the most was just how many people were affected by this because of where it happened. You have a lot of people who live in Southern California that are from Hawaii, and you have a lot of people that have visited Hawaii. This touched a lot of people. Yes, it's an island far out in the Pacific Ocean, but in a way, don't you feel like Hawaii is kind of our neighbors here in Southern California? We are the closest state to them. Yeah, yeah, there's 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 an interesting connection um, for sure. Specifically, our like kind of surf and beach culture for most of the state here that lives close to the ocean. It's like Hawaii's kind of our first thought or go to for a getaway. It's our home away from home for for many of us. It feels like like a brotherhood kind of thing. Yeah. And can you talk about the aloha spirit and the aloha mentality? Because I haven't been around it nearly as much as you, but so many people that came and lent their time and volunteered were Hawaiians who mm -hmm. lived over there at one point. And they showed up here and they just said, where do I go? What do I do? And then they worked their asses off. Yeah. And they were dripping sweat, going until way past when we told them to go. It was incredible. Talk to me and talk to the audience about the Aloha spirit and why you're probably not surprised to see how hard so many of these people went for this community. A couple of things. That's a great point. And by no means am I an expert on this. And, you know, forgive me, I'm, I'm bad at articulating my own personal stuff. For me, that Aloha spirit and kind of their culture in a nutshell. For one, it's like generational. You know, ohana means family in Hawaiian. And that's kind of the spirit of how their whole system and ecosystem works. It's loving, it's caring, it's giving, it's welcoming. But below the surface of that, they're warriors and voyagers and doers. They did it all without us. 
right without our help for a long time you know and so beyond that there, there there's that aspect of it you know so you got to you follow their code and and respect is a big thing when the shit hits the fan they will fight mm-hmm. and they will do what they need to do and they will help each other and they will they will dig deep which is also why my biggest concern talking to my friend Dave who's over there right now is um making sure that things run smooth and these government agencies and these bureaucrats and and the systems in place to help making sure that you know you know there's no civil unrest that public safety is a priority and that the locals are heard and actually helped because not to sound negative at all these are the last as a culture of people these are the last people you want to piss off they deserve our best and they deserve everything we can give them from what i'm hearing they need to be heard and the red tape needs to be cut and you got to let them cuz they they want to do it we need to help them as much as we can but man the officials and the people in charge over there they need to fucking really pay attention on how to get out of the way right and that's going to be a huge part of this rebuilding process because they are already skeptical about all those guys yeah. and all those agencies. So we're trying to, you know, tiptoe around those those lines and that red tape while also maintaining our ear to the tracks for the grassroots route too and going around that because we've seen it. We're all on social media. I mean, fuck, you, you open Instagram, you're getting more of a story than you are on the local news. Yeah. You're seeing it. These guys are filling up gas cans, driving them in on jet skis. They're they're doing everything. Meanwhile, FEMA's over there on the tarmac telling people no, 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 and they're all standing around with clipboards. These people see through that kind of shit, and they know when they're getting screwed, and they better not screw the pooch on this one. And now's the time to help, and I pray that they can execute and deliver on that. Yeah. No, well said. Um, And who knows the islands and how to get around via the water better than the people that live there. And you're right. You do have to get out of their way and let them work and let them do things. And time is of the essence. You can't have people who need gas, who need food, who need medication, who need clean water sitting around waiting for someone with a clipboard to dole it out because they're running a playbook that they might've ran stateside that doesn't work over there. Yeah. Open the roads, let them go. The police should just be in their cars patrolling, making sure nothing bad's happening. Mm -hmm. Let the people organize, get together, and serve. I don't know. I see videos of the traffic and roadblocks and the shit in the airports and the ports. And it's like, dude. Get out of the way. Get the fuck out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is we are experiencing some of that at a much, much lower level and less dire level here as the headquarters in one of the largest hubs for donations in Southern California. Your wife has done such a great job of creating this organization, Community Relief Maui. And part of the organization is establishing a network of collection hubs from Santa Barbara down to San Diego. Incredible work that her and Jennifer Lawrence did. It's one thing to say, hey, we're going to open up our doors at Nation Golf in San Clemente and let people come here. It's a completely other thing. They 10 x it. They 10 x it. They set up these networks, and essentially it works like this. If you're not local to us, we have established a local donation hub for you to go to, and then that donation hub will bring it to us, and we will get it to Maui. Incredible system that your wife and Jennifer set up on such short notice. What's interesting is it's created kind of this chain reaction where when we hear something from the island in terms of, hey, these items are no longer needed, we have to then get that information out to the network of hubs. They have to get it to the people that are already coming to donate these items. Everything changes in real time, and we are doing our best to help where help is needed. Not to help for the sake of help, but to help where help is needed. Those are two very different things. And what I mean by that is if the island is telling us we no longer need used clothing because there is an influx of used clothing already here and the families who have no homes clearly have no places to store it. So please stop sending it because you're overstressing our system. When we hear that information, 
and we dole it out, there's a reason behind it. Yet, we have encountered some, very few I might add, very few. The majority of people coming through our doors have been incredibly gracious and understanding. But we have encountered some people who cannot check their ego at the door and understand that the garbage bag full of used clothing that they want to drop off to us that we simply cannot take because the island won't take it, that has created a little bit of conflict and some people who can't understand why we are saying no to them. And I do really want to be delicate about this because in no way are we ungrateful for the support. We're incredibly grateful and the vast, vast majority have been amazing. But there have been a few, and I, I didn't know that we were going to see this or experience this during this time, who have been downright angry with us for not taking their donations. Yep. Despite the fact that there is good reason why the donations are not being taken. It's not being taken because if we're the middleman, which we are, and the final destination is saying, please don't send this to us, it's our job to say we can't take this anymore. And then it means it's your job as a donor to respect those instructions and take that bag over to Goodwill. We have a team of people here sorting through the donations so that we can categorize it and get it on the right pallets, in the right groupings. You know, there's a system to this thing. Just emptying out your closet with shit you don't need and dumping it on us, that's not helping anyone but yourself. I'm sorry if that comes across harsh, but when I'm sifting through dirty underwear and fucking jackets and broken hide heels shoes, this is Hawaii. It's 85 and humid. No one wears jackets over there. Imagine you just lost everything. You're stranded on a deserted island. You have no running water, no electricity, no way to communicate. You need a fucking jacket? A dirty one at that? Come on. And then when we tell you no, you're going to get mad at me. We're not the goodwill. We're not waste management. We're some people trying to help people who desperately need it right now. And these are people that live in a specific geographic location with a specific climate and a specific situation. You know, it's been weighing heavy on my heart because we're putting on a face, we're, we're taking it on the chin with a lot of these people and trying to be nice, but come on, dude. Just to be clear, and I want to make this crystal clear, and you would agree with this, the vast, vast, vast majority of people have been awesome. Yep. Donating the right items, helping us out, jumping out of their car to sort it with us. It's been great. It's been absolutely great. The good news is, is we're going to adapt and we're going to learn from it and we're going to evolve how we do this moving forward once we open the doors back up, which hopefully will be this weekend, to get back on this ride. And when we do, we're going to have some strict rules and guidelines and a list of what we're looking for and, and how it needs to be processed. Yeah. And you know? this isn't us coming up with the list. It's Maui. No, Maui. We are listening to what is needed. Yeah. And it's changing by the hour. Right. You know, so when you pull up and we say no more clothes, don't fucking roll your eyes at me, buddy. Man, it's been so great to be a part of this. It's been it's been oh, amazing. It's, the, the, it's been the, awesome. There, there's over a hundred pallets in the warehouse across the street, wrapped and ready to go. We have more planes lined up than we originally thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, this shit is going to be getting over there in hours instead of days. Yeah. And we have logistics worked out. We have storage there. There's a lot of good people coming out of the woodworks trying to logistically figure out how to get stuff to the people in need despite the bureaucratic red tape trying to go through the government to do so. There's a lot of a lot of good guys and gals over there who have planes, trains, and automobiles. It's not just Uncle Sam. It's been really awesome to be a part of this grassroots thing. I think what your wife has done and put together is amazing. I think that she is finding some therapy and being able to turn her heartbreak into a heart full of giving. And to organize this has just, it's taken everything out of her, all of her time, all yep. of her energy. There are so many messages coming in to her, to our email, 
and we're happy to do it. We really are. This feels good, and it feels good to be surrounded by so many great people who have jumped in. The volunteers have just been out of this world. So we don't want anyone to get it twisted that we are sitting here wishing that we didn't do this. That's just simply not the case. It's not the case. We love it, and we love everyone that's helped. We just want... (laughs) We just want to be clear that when we are messaging going forward, we're not speaking for ourselves. We're speaking for the island because we're listening to the island and that everyone should consider that what you give is ultimately going to get over there. And when it gets over there, can it be used? Or does your trash become somebody else's trash? And we are not here to dump trash on a decimated place right now. We're just not here to do it. So what we have done is taken that stuff ourselves and rerouted it to the goodwill, the stuff that will not be going over there because it has no reason to go over there. We did that. We're hoping to not have to do that going forward. Right. We're hoping that people will heed the messages that we're putting out there. And moreover, we're hoping that no one is personally offended or mad that we have to get a little bit tighter and a little bit stricter and a little bit more refined and a little bit more process oriented in this whole thing. Mm. Look, we're building the plane as it's up in the air. We don't know what we're doing. We've never done this before. Right. We opened up our doors and people came flooding in and it was incredible. Absolutely amazing. And right now we are taking a break from collecting because we have so much to go through and process and sort and ship and emails to respond to and things to coordinate. I think the key message right now for everybody to remember, pardon the cliche, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Mm. There's so much more work to be done. This will be headline news for a couple of more nights and then it will cycle out just like everything else. But nothing is bringing back the 96 people and counting that have died, probably the hundreds of more that will be reported as thousands are missing right now. Nothing is going to rebuild these structures overnight. These families aren't going to all of a sudden have homes because you're not hearing about it on the news anymore. This is a straight up marathon and we need everybody's help to continue the drumbeat of giving and generosity and thoughts and prayers between now and And when the job's over, and we'll know when the job's over, but the job is not over because the weekend's over or because the news is going to tell you it's over. And then one more thing. Like I said, we are following the needs of the island as they change, and it's a very, very fluid situation. And we do want to say this. While we are currently turning away used clothing, there may come a time here in the next week or two or month where that used clothing becomes an essential item. It's not right now, but it very well could be and probably will be something that is worth giving. So if you are wanting to give clothing, that's awesome. Just sit tight and wait and follow at Community Relief Maui for all those updates or follow us at Nation Golf and we will continue to keep you updated. It's been such a learning experience and such a growing experience and such a beautiful experience beautiful in the sense of generosity and giving and community that we have seen from everyone. We just encourage people to stay in it, stay in this fight, stay in it for the long haul because we're going to, and I know that you come to Nation Golf and to this podcast for something else, but this is it for us right now. This is the focal point. This is what's staring us in the face. This is the job that needs to get done. I came in here today on a Monday expecting, I guess, some sense of normalcy, but it was anything but. People were coming by and dropping off donations. We had volunteers show up asking what they could do. And our place, which I had famously said I wanted to have more foot traffic after you had remodeled the showroom, <laughs> has gotten- We got it. We got it. It's it's not for the business, but that's totally, totally fine right now. Yeah. and. How grateful do you feel for a couple of things? Grateful that we have this space to be able to do this. Hmm. Not everyone has it. We have an office that functions as a office, 
a showroom, a lounge, and a warehouse. And we have this giant alley behind us where we could run the operation that we ran the past couple of days. Have you stopped to think about, man, I just, I can't believe that this was at our disposal and we were able to put it into action the way that we did? Yeah, I mean, especially like how this alley's set up is basically like a cul-de-sac. There's not going to be through traffic, but it's truck accessible. And we just kind of commandeered the whole thing. The fact that my wife's brand, Danny Del Mar, has been successful and has the place on either side of us, you know, utilizing that as well. It's just been incredible. It was a perfect scenario for us to be able to help. Man, it happened fast. The floodgates opened and we just kind of put our heads down and went for it. Again, it's a testament to to the volunteers and, and the manpower and the time put in because every task looks so daunting at every step of the way up and Till all the end of every day when it was time to break everything down mm-hmm. and watching how fast everyone just, just even just as an example, just the breakdown and cleanup every day was just like, oh my God, it's just, it's just incredible what we can do together. And when we all think about each other and try to work together, I think that's what I'm so stoked to be a part of and see these past few days is it's just a really great reminder of how much easier it is to do anything together. Yeah. What I thought was really cool is, and I'm reminded of this more and more in life, when you turn on the news or social media and everyone is going back and forth at each other and we're being divided into these tribalistic camps and you get this feeling just from looking at a screen that this is a pretty divided world, that to me is a narrative being sold. It's not real life. Because what we have seen this past week is that people don't care who you are or where you're from or what you believe in, what God you pray to, who you vote for, when the community needs to come together. They just get together and do it. And that's been amazing to see that humanity, the nature of it is to come together and work together. And we saw it firsthand and it's awesome. And I hope that that sentiment is felt more often and that it doesn't take tragedy to bring it out. We do need to give some special shout outs, which is a dangerous game to play because we had so much help over the weekend and we are going to forget someone And we want to apologize in advance for that. But just some people that come to your mind off of the top this past week who just went above and beyond. God, there's so many. Everything moved so fast. There's a number of men and women that I I, I didn't even get their names. There's a dude, the older gentleman with the ponytail. Yeah. He's the pool man, I think, in Huntington or something. He was here both days. That dude was a warrior. Gave up his Saturday uh, and Sunday, did not stop moving. Did, did. And then there's a couple other guys who were in the heavy lifter group over there. I know the two two girls who were the ringleaders were Rachel. There was Rachel Anderson who kind of took lead, I would call her volunteer director, mm-hmm. out there. Same story as my wife and I. Um, her husband, his business donated all the boxes, Yeah, which was huge. Huge. And then she directed the entire volunteer work and just hustled everything in it. And she's born and raised on Maui too. So this is part of her heart too. And fast forward, they were able to get involved on the logistics side too. And so the first drop, we're using one of their um, networks, warehouses over there amongst the others we have lined up. So, I mean, they were just a massive help, which helped Katie Kai so much because Katie Kai could cut her loose to just handle that situation. And she was just running point and then so katie kai could work on you know the communications and the phone calls and the like i said just being on the phone all hours of the day there were so many good helpers dude like it was incredible yeah i I do want to say jorge hill and his wife cindy huge unbelievable they came up from mexico yeah jordan dixon jordan dixon tony bacardi really showed up Tony Bacardi came down from Santa Barbara. Yep. These are not exactly easy drives from Mexico yeah. to Santa Barbara. Yeah, and, and then just a slew of people, all ages, just 
rolling up their sleeves and just tackling it. The the gals who were doing the sorting of mm-hmm. the clothing mm-hmm. those two days, that was the worst job on earth. Right when you think you got it all figured out, another U-Haul backs up and you're like, oh my God, we're de- we're dead. Yeah. We're fucked. And somehow, some way, everyone just worked together and got it over. I couldn't believe every night when we were driving off, looking in the rearview mirror, knowing that the business was locked up, shit was put away, and the alley was like spotless. Mm-hmm. It was just like, how did we do it? Just imagine laundry day at your house, except it's 10 hours long, it doesn't stop, and they're not your clothes. And that's what these sorters were doing. It was an unbelievable effort. Chris Carlo yeah. on Saturday, he's a nation stalwart, came out, and he did not stop moving. And... I don't know what it was, but you know how you're always looking to take a break when you're doing hard labor? No one was looking for a bench to grab a blow. Everyone was going nonstop the entire time. And Chris Carlo was like the Energizer Bunny out there. He was amazing. But yeah, I know that we've probably forgotten some people, but it's just been... It's, there's too many to remember, but it's it, just a few that came to my mind. And then the network of collection hubs, Oasis Tanning up in Ventura, Jonesy, your boy. You want to talk about Jonesy for a little bit? Shane Jones, he's an animal. Um, even just now, I'm texting him as we speak. He's just like a constant fire of positivity and hustle. He lined up the guy this morning who has all the medical equipment you know, a lot of the stuff that processed here came from his place, you mm-hmm. know, and um, he was a massive part of this whole deal. And then down south, um, linked into our little surfboard network, Josh Hall surfboards had boxes going. What was the other one? We had another one, right? Collection point. Oh, yeah, the tattoo, the tattoo gallery. They backed up U-Haul trucks that you've never seen shit packed in it like that before. Yeah. You're talking about stuff that is going to take a long time to go through. And, and it did, but we're thankful for that. And dude, Maddie Higgins drove up and down between here and Huntington, unloading, loading trucks all day yesterday. Right. I love to take inventory of things as they're happening, which is why I asked you, like, do you step back and look at the space that we have and think to yourself, what a blessing that we had this space and we were able to do it. Do you stop and think about the fact that you were able to take your two-year-old daughter to Lahaina before what happened happened and the fact that you guys will have those pictures and that memory and and how important that has to be for the fact that like that is your wife's hometown and you guys were able to see it just in the nick of time it's this inventory that I really think when you stop and you think about these things and whether or not you believe in God just like it there's just so much purpose for all of this and the way that Maddie Higgins came into my life is the weirdest story of all time the guy was part of a Jim Rome radio bit without even wanting to be. I went out and got a cat tattoo for a radio bit. I met Maddie. Maddie ends up becoming one of my best friends by complete accident. We have stayed in touch ever since then, despite the fact that I no longer work for that show. You and I just recently played golf with him. He's responsible for 14 of my tattoos. He tattooed you. He is, without a doubt, one of our best friends. And the fact that that guy is in our life saw what we were doing, turned his tattoo shop into a collection hub. I mean, that's unheard of, right? A tattoo yeah. shop saying, hey, we're going to collect for Maui. He did that. He went out. He rented a U-Haul. He filled it up. He brought it down. He unloaded it. It's just insane. Like, I do have to stop and think about the fact that how this guy got into my life and what he's done for me and us since he's been in our life is insane. You're wearing yeah. a shirt right now that has Maddie's logo on it. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's 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 amazing. And shout out to Heck, the owner of the Tattoo Gallery, for opening up his space. Trust yeah. us. We know what it's like to open up your doors of your business and be a collection hub. It's not easy. The journey's not over. We will continue, and uh, we'll keep everyone posted. And my goodness, man, what a community. What a community. Yep. Yep. It's going to be a long process. We're kind of just trying to focus on the now because knowing that the history of that place is gone and we know how things go nowadays is how things are rebuilt and and how they change. And, you know, it'll it'll never be the same. They'll never be able to restore it to what it was. Um, We can scratch and claw to get it as close as we can, but goodbyes are hard. And that's kind of 
the hardest part of this whole thing is we have some people to save, but Lahaina is going to be a different place moving forward. Lucky we got one last taste of it a few weeks ago. It almost makes it even more sad, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I can't imagine. I can't imagine how that feels, whether it feels really, really fortunate and lucky and blessed to have seen it and to have pictures of your daughter standing there in what you guys knew it to be and what it once was, or if it just makes it that much more devastating that you were literally there. Yeah, I, um, I'm notorious for not taking enough photos when we do cool stuff. When all this happened, I was trying to look back at the photos we took, and the only photos I have of us in our time on Front Street, I have two photos, and we had a seat at the water at Chemo's for lunch. I have a photo of Katie Kai holding Palmer against the railing with her back to the water, and then them turned around, leaning over the side, looking at the fish over the edge. And it's just like, fuck. But... You know, she got to, she got to see it. We will continue with these efforts and we will continue to lean on all of the folks in our network and in our community to help. If you have a line to Katie Kai Engel, maybe now is not the best time, but sometime soon, drop her a line and just tell her how amazing she is for what she's put together. It's been been incredible and i can't imagine how proud you are to be her husband and to see what she has done because this is the kind of stuff that you read books about from all-time humanitarians so it's been great yep that's gonna do it for us we will be back next week and maybe we'll talk some golf talk some life tell some jokes who knows Right now, we are going with the flow and the same way that we communicate the needs of Maui back to the people that are helping us out is the same way that we will follow what our gut and our instinct tells us for the content that we put out on this podcast and on social media. But right now, this feels like the right thing to do. Yep. Thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned to at Community Relief Maui on Instagram, and we hope to see you sometime soon down here at the shop. Let's do some packing and some sorting together and uh, let us rebuild this community the best way that we possibly can. Yeah, and uh, one last thing. Go ahead and follow and stay up to date with at Community Relief Maui on Instagram. We're going to be pausing donations until probably Friday this week. So stay tuned for that. We will most likely, if things continue the way they, they have been, need volunteer work, stay up to date with the current list and updates with everything that's happening over there and how we can help from here. God bless you all. And uh, our thoughts and prayers are with the people of Maui and will continue to be for quite some time. Thanks for listening.